we have one final trick for analyzing summations. The way to analyze this summation is we're going to use one of the formulas that I mentioned earlier, one of the properties that we've yet to exploit. Step one is identifying that this summation does not start at i equals one or i equals zero. It starts at i equals 2n plus one, which is not a convenient value because our formulas all presuppose that i starts at one or zero. In this formula, we have a bunch of expressions that all for our known formula started at one. So we're going to try to rewrite this as two different summations that both start at one. So this is equal to the sum from i equals one to the top bound, 4n squared plus 3n plus eight of the thing inside of the summation, which is 3i cubed, 3i cubed plus 4i plus 12 minus the sum from i equals 1 to the bottom bound minus 1, which is 2n, of the same thing, 3i cubed plus 4i plus 12. So this is the last property we mentioned in our useful properties video. We can split a summation that does not start at 1 into two different summations that do both start at 1. So how are we going to deal with this now? We now just use linearity, as we have done in the past, and our known formulas, again, as we have done in the past, to analyze the summation. This is equal to, we are going to distribute the summation. We have 3 times the sum from i equals 1 to 4n squared plus 3n plus 8 of i cubed plus 4 times the sum from i equals 1 to 4n squared plus 3n plus 8 of i plus the sum from i equals 1 to that same thing, 4n squared plus 3n plus 8 of 12. That's the first summation dealt with. And now we need to subtract from that the second summation. We're going to exploit copy-paste here because it's going to be the exact same algebra, but the top bound changes. So we're going to copy this thing and simply change the top bounds. So we change all of the top bounds to 2n instead, and otherwise we're going to do the exact same thing. So 2n, 2n, and 2n. And now what we're going to do is use our formulas six times, which looks messy, but this will work and give us a closed form expression. So this is equal to three, times the summation for i cubed. Let's comment on that off to the side. We're going to highlight that in light blue. And off to the side in light blue, we will include that summation. The sum from i equals 1 to n of i cubed, according to our list of formulas, was n squared times n plus 1 quantity squared divided by 4. And here, the only difference is that the top bound is 4n squared plus 3n plus 8. But otherwise, we're going to use that formula. So this is 4n squared plus 3n plus 8 quantity squared times the same thing plus 1. So 4n squared plus 3n plus 9 quantity squared divided by 4. That's our first term in our expression. Plus 4 times a summation we've seen a couple of times now, which is the sum from i equals 1 to n. Let's just, for sanity's sake, highlight that in this light green color. And off to the side, write in light green the formula we're using so that we can trace through what we're doing. This is the sum from i equals 1 to n of i is n times n plus 1 divided by 2. So let's use that formula again. Let's keep with our formatting so we can easily trace what we're doing. This is in light green. The top bound, which is 4n squared plus 3n plus 8. 4n squared plus 3n plus 8. Times the top bound plus 1. 4n squared plus 3n plus 9. Divided by 2. We then have one more term before we start subtracting, which is we have 12. Again, that is a fixed quantity. So the number of terms in that summation times that quantity is what we will get. So this is 12 times the number of terms. It's going to be the top minus bottom plus one. One reason that starting summations at one is beneficial is that the number of terms in a summation becomes the top bound of the summation if it starts at one. So 
The number of terms here are 4n squared plus 3m plus 8. That's the first three summations. Then we subtract from that the other three summations. So this is minus a very similar thing, but we're plugging in 2n instead. So this is 3 times the quantity. In light blue, just stick with consistency, we have the top bound squared times the top bound plus 1 quantity squared, all divided by 4. We then do a very similar thing and do minus 4 times the formula that we did in light green earlier, which was the top bound times the top bound plus 1, all divided by 2. And then we have a summation that is effectively constant for the last summation. We have 1 to 2n of 12, so that is the thing inside of the summation, the sum and, which is 12, times the number of terms, which is the top bound minus the bottom bound plus 1, which is 2n. And now, oops, sorry, I have a sign error. This should be minus 12 times 2n, because I'm distributing the negative sign that I had out front here into all of the summations. And now that horrible mess is a closed form expression for that summation. Notice this quickly gets out of hand. As you could probably tell as we were going through this, this is a nightmare. So sometimes we want to try to avoid this, and we will see some techniques for doing that in our future videos. However, this is a formula that we could then use to compute the exact value of that summation. And you could actually simplify this a lot by combining a bunch of terms. However, we are again not particularly interested in that as simplification, because we are only going to be interested in, in the long run, the complexity of these things, because we are using this to analyze running times. So there is a worthwhile endeavor to be had of actually trying to get a closed form expression sometimes for that is simple. However, we are not going to be doing that.